Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, July 2nd, and here in the Atlantic, if you're east of 70 west, things are pretty quiet, but if you're west of 70 west, there's a lot of tropical moisture building up in the northwestern Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico right now, and this upper trough that has stalled out over the central United States is funneling all of this tropical moisture up into the southeastern United States, and if you live here in the southeastern states, uh, you're probably getting really tired of the rain, and this is yet another batch of tropical moisture riding right up your rally and uh, what's interesting about the situation is we're starting to get a little bit of mid-level vorticity near the western tip of Cuba here associated with some of this convection uh, there is a tropical wave in here it's kind of hard to see in the surface wind fields but it is there barely and it's coming northwest into this uh, eastern part of the Gulf of Mexico and this could get a little bit interesting over the next couple of days there is a chance that we might get a sneak tropical depression or weak tropical storm out of this uh, simply because this upper trough here is just sitting here and not moving eastward like most troughs do. It's sitting and leaving a divergent flow aloft over the eastern Gulf of Mexico with all of this southerly flow. And I'll show you in a minute why it's so divergent. Uh, but this little system in here could just work its way down to the surface and become a sneak little storm coming into the eastern half of the Gulf Coast. Uh, but even if one does form, all that would mean is perhaps a little bit more focused ball of precipitation coming ashore in the, that particular area. Uh, but like Barry and other systems we've had so far this year, Andrea, I should say Andrea, which was the more similar one, uh, will not be a huge wind threat, mostly water. And here's why uh, we might get a little system out of this. This is 24 hours out. The wind barbs here are up at 200 millibars in the upper atmosphere. And uh, you can see we have an upper low near the Bahamas here, and we have our upper trough over the central United States. And this is bringing a big southerly flow out of the Gulf, which is speeding up as it moves north. So that pro produces divergent flow aloft, which means air is spreading out. Plus, this upper low here is pulling air away to the southeast. Um, so you have one stream of air going north, one going southeast, and this stream to the north is speeding up as it goes. So all of this means air is spreading away from this area aloft, and when air spreads away from an area aloft, it means air has to rise from underneath to replace it. And that's why you see the GFS showing some of these green and yellow colors here indicating low level spin because low pressure is developing because air is leaving the column. So it's trying to develop this tropical wave into a little bit more of an area of low pressure. And then you can see by hour 42, Again, here's the low-level vorticity, and these are the low-level wind barbs now showing a little bit of a kink here moving ashore. You can see a little vorticity ball. So it is possible that we get a little something out of this. And here's the Canadian showing a little more intense ball. This would be a tropical depression coming ashore just east of Mobile. And this general area uh, could get something like this coming ashore. Uh, this would be today's Tuesday, so Thursday afternoon or evening uh, this thing would be coming ashore. Um, but don't expect it to be strong. It's mainly just an issue of how much rainfall are you going to get is the question you should be asking. This isn't really a threat to become too strong. When you have a big southerly flow coming out of the Caribbean into the states like this, it's generally hard for lows to close off fast, and this will get whisked ashore before it has too much time over water. And of course, we have another storm developing in the eastern Pacific, and that will move out to sea. And we actually have more than that to watch. It is only early July, but we actually have a lot of potential systems that may or may not develop over the next couple of weeks. The next one is going to be from this upper low out here in the central Atlantic. You can see on the satellite right now, if I can get that back up, there's a big trough. You can see kind of the cirrus clouds rotating counterclockwise here. This is getting pinched off from a ridge to its west and a ridge to its east. So its tail, the tail part of it, is going to break off and retrograde towards the west-southwest and become a cutoff upper low, which you can see here by day three. This would be Friday. And this is going to be coming this way. And uh, the issue with this is it will be bringing a little bit of a mid-level trough with it. And you can see some of the green colors here indicating low-level vorticity on its western side. But then there's also a tropical wave coming out from the Caribbean. You can see this little line of vorticity here on Saturday. This is a low-level tropical wave moving westward underneath of this now upper low shown by the wind barbs here. And so by day five, which is Sunday, you can see the upper low. And then there's green colors directly underneath of it. So we have stacked vorticity. So we have low level spin underneath of an upper level low. This is a cold core subtropical situation, but what can happen is when you get over waters that are as warm as the waters are here of 28 Celsius or, or warmer, uh, you can eventually get thunderstorms to develop underneath of this stacked circulation and eventually convert it to warm core. And even before that, it could possibly become a subtropical system. So it's possible that this might try to develop a little bit. The problem for this system is going to be twofold. One, 
is that there's a strong pressure gradient right now with lots of trade winds coming through the Caribbean. And when you have this, uh, it's a little bit hard for low pressure systems to close off. So even though there is some spin in the low levels here, it may not have enough uh, enough to become a closed low before it runs into Florida or the southeastern United States. Uh, but it is going to be around for at least three or four days coming across water that is more than warm enough. It will take a while. Systems like these take a long time to develop, but there is a chance that this tries to do something. You can see it coming into eastern Florida here on the GFS. It's probably more likely to come into the Gulf of Mexico somewhere, and if it gets enough time, something could happen. But the problem for it is uh, A, the trade winds, but the second problem is the fact that by day six here next week, you see this kind of ridge structure in the upper atmosphere with a clockwise flow of wind here, bringing a north easterly flow over the Gulf of Mexico. And when you see this, it's generally suppressive of tropical development because uh, the wind flow is now convergent. Unlike the, unlike the divergent flow we have during the next few days, it switches and air starts piling up aloft. And when air piles up aloft, it sinks downward. And that generally suppresses thunderstorm activity. And that's what this system will be running into. Uh, so it may not develop much, and most of the models actually do not develop it. The only reason I mention it is because cold core upper systems like this with tropical waves underneath them are rarely forecasted by the models days in advance. And if they do develop, they are usually fairly uh, surprising and the storms end up sneaking up on us. So it's just something to keep an eye on. We'll be increasing rain chances for Florida and the Bahamas next week, um, but not an imminent threat, still about six or seven days away. And then look, we have another tropical wave uh, coming into uh, the Lesser Antilles here from the east, and eventually one of these things is going to develop. I mean, it's only July, but these things have been pretty potent, and the fact that we have a tut-like upper trough that's splitting away pieces to the west, like this one right here, is generally a favorable environment for tropical waves behind to be coming northwest and uh, getting fueled by that setup because, again, it causes divergence aloft where air spreads out and these things can start uh, bombing away with thunderstorms and try to develop. If this was August and September these things would be developing right and left. Right now it's still not quite favorable but we could get one of these things to go off eventually. And considering that the MJO uh, is hanging around, notice where it is now. Here's the initialization which is kind of hard to see. This is at June 31st it's missing a couple days of data, but look at the model forecasts here. They're all over the place. You have the GFS going over here, European over here, Canadian in between. Uh, but the main theme is that it sticks around for the next few days in phases one and two. And both of these phases favor upward motion in the tropical Atlantic, which means that these tropical waves will be an environment that is more increasingly favorable over time for a development because as climatology moves along here, we get deeper into July, the wind shear starts lessening in the deep tropical Atlantic, and you can start getting development east of the Caribbean as opposed to in it or west of it or north of it. We're going to have to start looking out uh, for the main development region in the central Atlantic. And here, indeed, is the GFS ensemble mean of sea level pressure showing that there's a lot of variance in the ensemble members west of the Cape Verde Islands by day 12 here. So this is July 14th. And the Canadian also agrees that there is enhanced variance west of uh, the Cape Verde Islands with these red numbers showing areas of low pressure starting to develop on the northern end of the intertropical convergence zone. And what that means is that these models are both probably seeing strong tropical waves coming off of Africa and moving westward here. There's a lot of dry air out there right now, which means a couple waves will probably be sacrificed to the god of dry air. But behind them, if new waves can come off, they can start getting in an environment where they could start developing out in this area. And we may have to start watching for systems out this way, as opposed to all of them being over here. It's getting to that time of year slowly but surely. Eventually it will be August, and then we will really be watching these in earnest. Uh, but it could be a problem as soon as a week or two from now, probably now July 15th onward through at least the 25th, really as long as the MJO stays in this region. It has to leave before we're really going to be uh, over this threat. It hasn't begun yet, uh, but it will begin in about a week. After the 10th, I think we have to start watching those waves in the Central Atlantic. And then as long as the MJO stays here, have to keep a close eye on things. 
So again, to sum up, lots of activity right now. We have a small system a tropical wave coming into the Gulf of Mexico that in about 48 hours will be making landfall on the Gulf Coast, possibly could develop into a sneaky tropical depression if it gets time to close off a of circulation, but will not be a wind threat, will only bring additional rainfall into an already soaked region here, and that will be the main story. We have an upper level low that will be cutting off and retrograding westward towards the Bahamas, Florida, and the Gulf of Mexico in five, six, or seven days. That could possibly uh, try to be mischievous as a tropical wave that's currently out here moves underneath of that low, stacks the vorticity, currently not developed by the models but should be watched anyway will increase rain chances for Florida and then even later on down the road in the long range in a couple of weeks we will have to be watching the eastern and central Atlantic for potential development of African easterly waves coming into an environment that will be favorable as the MJO comes into our region of the world so a very be very busy start to July July as a whole will probably be more active than normal even if we don't get a ton of storms the chances for storms are numerous right now so we will keep an eye on all of these things. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.